What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the Cosmic Wonder. I'm Warren Thompson, and we have some more news about the situation between Sony and Marvel Studios right now. It kind of feels like it did several years ago when Sony was debating whether to take Spider-Man out of the MCU or not. Luckily, at that time, Sony and Marvel Studios came to a new deal to keep Spider-Man in the MCU, but now it seems like they are trying to have a little bit more control over what exactly and specifically happens in the next Spider-Man movie. If you have not heard, recent reports state that Sony wants Spider-Man 4 to be a big multiversal movie where Marvel Studios and Kevin Feige want the movie to be grounded and not a big multiversal movie. Sony is also pushing for the movie to release in 2025, whereas Marvel Studios does not want to do it that soon because Kevin Feige right now is spread a little thin, which is totally understandable because he has a lot of movies coming out and Disney Plus projects. And what's really interesting is it seems that Sony is wanting more control over Spider-Man 4 as their Spider-Man franchise sort of starts to fall apart. In fact, The Hollywood Reporter recently did an article and this was the title of it. Inside Sony's Madam Web Collapse, forget about a new franchise. With the subtitle stating this, the flop is wiping out an entire plan for a new movie series as the studio becomes the latest superhero studio in need of a pivot. So Sony is trying to get more control over the MCU Spider-Man while they get less and less in control of their own situation with their own live action Spider-Verse adjacent universe. But we have even more details today about what is happening between Sony and Marvel. This new report is coming from insider Daniel RPK who gave us a few new tidbits about what is happening between Sony Sony and Marvel right now, and some of these are actually good. Kind of, and of course, I'll explain. But his first point is not good. He states, I can also confirm that Sony wants to rush Spider-Man 4 no matter what. Which is terrible, because rushing anything when it's not ready to be done is usually bad, and usually results in the quality not being up to par with what the studio would want it to be because it was rushed and they didn't have enough time to work on it. And we have specifically heard from the insider Can We Get Some Toast that Kevin Feige right now is spread too thin. He's got a lot of MCU projects that he's working on right now and didn't plan on Spider-Man being released in 2025, but Sony is now dead set on releasing Spider-Man in 2025. So, so far, this is not looking good. As I mentioned in my video yesterday, they're going to have to push Blade back and possibly the Fantastic Four as well to get Spider-Man 4 in the June of 2025 spot. Because right now, Sony has an untitled Marvel movie in the June of 2025 spot, which is why we believe that is when Sony wants Spider-Man 4 to come out. But Kevin Feige and the MCU have the Fantastic Four coming out July 25th of 2025, and Kevin Feige does not want a movie in the MCU to release only a month after another MCU movie. So reports state that Kevin Feige might move back the Fantastic Four to Christmas time of 2025 and Blade to 2026. Now it gets kind of worse, unfortunately, before we talk about the good stuff. Daniel RPK states Tom Rothman, the chairperson of Sony Pictures Entertainment, is the one who is fighting Kevin Feige on what to do with Spider-Man 4, and he is the one who is trying to rush it. Daniel RPK also reports that Tom Rothman also wants John Watts back to direct while Kevin Feige wants someone new and to have Watts on other projects. Now, this pretty much checks out, as John Watts was originally going to be the director of the new Fantastic Four film. However, John Watts backed out of it because he wanted to take a break from directing superhero movies, which makes sense. He directed Spider-Man Homecoming, Far From Home, and then No Way Home, and we all know how big of an ordeal Spider-Man No Way Home was. They were trying to keep Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield a secret. They really did not. Of course, I didn't help at all in that situation, but ultimately it led to the biggest Spider-Man movie of all time, and that's a lot to deal with, so it would make sense that he would want to take a break. So not only does Marvel Studios not want John Watts to direct the next Spider-Man movie, but John Watts himself really doesn't want to direct the next Spider-Man movie either, but apparently Sony just doesn't care and says, nope, this is what we want, and this probably is coming from the fact that their franchise with Spider-Man is failing right now, and their plans that 
they had for some big Madam Web universe and franchise is failing because the movie is just a huge giant flop. And it's sad because the reason it was a flop, really at the heart of it, is because of the studio. We've heard the studio interfered so much with the writing, with the direction, with the marketing, even with the acting, not letting actors do any type of improv at all. And now they're trying to control the only thing they really can that makes them money, Spider-Man in the MCU. I did a video last night talking about my personal opinion on it. You can check that out if you want to hear it, but let's dive into what's good. We'll dive into it in just a bit, but first, big thank you to Fume for sponsoring this video. Honestly, I just sit here like all day and I just fidget with this. I just, I turn it because it clicks. It goes in like, I just, I, all day when I'm recording, when I'm watching YouTube videos, whatever it is, I just fidget with this all day and I, I love it for some reason. <laughs> Fume is a game changer for a lot of people in turning bad habits into good habits. A lot of people struggle with these bad habits, but Fume looks at these in a different way. Not everything in the habit is wrong. So instead of a drastic, uncomfortable change, why not just remove the bad from your habit? And that's exactly what Fume does. They're innovative and they're award-winning and they're a flavored air device. That's all it is. It's flavored air. So it has none of the bad things and the bad habit in it. Instead of vapor, it uses flavored air. Instead of of electronics, fume is completely natural. And instead of harmful chemicals, Fume uses delicious flavors. I had actually heard really great things about Fume from my friends who were struggling with some bad habits. They actually raved about it and how it helped them, which is why I agreed to partner with them. And they sent me some samples and they honestly are super refreshing and taste very flavorful and good. And it comes in beautiful real wood. And it's honestly really fun to just sit there and kind of fidget with if you're someone who likes to fidget like I do. And I know stopping is something we all put off because it's hard, but with Fume, it's easy and they have served over 150,000 customers and have thousands of success stories. So if you want help in kicking your addiction and you want to support the channel, you can head over to tryfume.com slash cosmic for 10% off the journey pack. That's tryfume.com, T-R-Y-F-U-M.com and use code cosmic for 10% off the journey pack. Now, one thing that we have recently heard from the same report from Daniel RPK talking about Sony and Marvel is that Sony Animation is developing other Spider-Man animated movies, at least two more. And I'm actually very curious about this. One, I'm curious about the characters they're going to base these movies off of, but two, I'm curious to see if they can pull it off without Christopher Miller and Phil Lord. I'm assuming they're not going to get them to direct every Spider-Man animated movie that they do. And I'm curious to see if it really is Christopher Miller and Phil Lord who are working their magic on the Spider-Verse animated movies. And if they're gone, if Sony can do it without them. They'd also have to choose good characters and Sony does not have a good track record of that. They could just do a regular Peter Parker Spider-Man, although I'm not sure about the rights to specifically Peter Parker Spider-Man, but I would love an animated movie just about him. I'd also really love one about Spider-Gwen, but let me know who you'd like to see. And another thing, which is really cool, is that Amy Pascal wants Kevin Feige involved in a future Miles Morales movie. Now, what's interesting is that Amy Pascal has confirmed that they are indeed going to make a live action Miles Morales movie. She did say recently that they do have to finish Beyond the Spider-Verse and Spider-Man 4 before they can jump into the live action Miles Morales film, which no big deal. We can definitely wait for that, but it's interesting that she is seeking the help of Kevin Feige and wants him involved because that is basically the opposite of what is going on with Tom Rothman, Sony's chairperson. He is basically saying, Marvel, this is what I want to be done. Whereas Amy Pascal is saying, Marvel, aka Kevin Feige, help me make a good Miles Morales solo movie. It's the complete opposite thinking, but Amy Pascal has the right mindset. And in fact, it's because of Amy Pascal's rational thinking that we even have Spider-Man in the MCU at all. She met with Kevin Feige asking for help on The Amazing Spider-Man 3 with Andrew Garfield and Kevin Kevin Feige said, it's not going to work. You need to let me use Spider-Man in the MCU and then it'll work. Amy Pascal was originally kind of furious, but then she came around to thinking that, you know what? That is a good idea. And of course it was. So it's good to know that she still has pretty clear thinking when it comes to Spider-Man asking for the help of Kevin Feige, wanting him to be involved in the Miles Morales movie. Let's hope that she can talk to Tom Rothman and Tom Rothman can back off a little bit at least, and let Kevin Feige do his thing. Now, it sounds like 
the date of 2025, possibly June or Christmas time, is really when Sony wants this thing out. Daniel RPK said that he confirmed Sony wants to rush Spider-Man 4 no matter what. Let's hope that Kevin Feige can talk some sense into them. But let me know what you think about all of this in the comments down below. Would you like John Watts to come back to direct another Spider-Man movie? And would you watch a Miles Morales movie based in the Sony universe if Kevin Feige helped on the project? Let me know your thoughts about all of this in the comments down below. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe so you can stay up to date on the MCU and of course the Spider-Verse over at Sony now. If you subscribe and leave a comment, you're automatically entered in our giveaway for a chance to win a PS5, an Xbox Series X, some Marvel Legends items, or some DC items. The winner picks one item and we pick one winner at the end of each month. You can find us on Instagram and Twitter and as always, thank you all so much for watching. Woof woof.